ghost children possessing giant robots. Tell me how to stop them. You don't. It's too late. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Backlot Adventure Movie Room. My name is Tucker Hazel. Today, I'm joined by my co-host who I would rather do anything than spend five nights with, Tanner Dykstra. And today, we're here to talk about Five Nights at Freddy's, the long-awaited video game adaptation horror bonanza. And we have finally seen it and we're here to give our thoughts. But if you have seen Five Nights at Freddy's or any of the other horror movies that come out this, this season, we've gotten quite a few. You can join our Discord. That link is in the description and while you're down there. Let me know what of those horror movies was your favorite. Because it's a, it's a mixed bag, to say the very least. And Tanner, this bag has just gotten more mixed. Because we mm -hmm. have seen Five Nights at Freddy's. And I'm here to hear your thoughts on it. I'm here to listen, Tanner. We're calling this therapy. Oh, I see. You're, you're only here yes, to listen. Yeah. You're not here to give your thoughts at all. How did that make you feel? Um, well, Tucker, Five Nights at Freddy's made me feel odd, mm. I'll say. I'm a little conflicted okay. about Five Nights at Freddy's. We have, we have a bit of a discussion, as we often do, walking out of the theater uh, to our car in the, in the bitter cold last night. Um, and I think what we kind of landed on is that, like, sometimes Five Nights at Freddy's works, but it doesn't work enough of the time. Yeah. There are glimpses and flashes and even entire scenes where it's doing exactly what it should be mm -hmm. doing. Um, but sadly, for a majority of its runtime, it's trying to be something it's not. Yeah. And that is like a semi-serious, like... Um, Personal drama? You know, not at all... Yeah, not at all corny horror movie. Like something that resembles a lot of modern horror that we've both are sort of undermined and uh, degraded, which is like the the grief as a analog for yeah, horror yeah. kind of thing. When in fact it should be stupid, silly giant robots yeah. walking about and murdering people. And it's that sometimes, yeah, occasionally. but just not enough of the time. Yeah. That's what's really frustrating about this because I'm not a giant five nights at Freddy's fan. I, I, I no. am remiss to admit that I was back in the day, like middle school, like, like mm. eight or nine years ago or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. But I've always thought that there was potential for this because we haven't gotten a video game horror movie, I don't think. Uh, most of Resident oh, Evil. Oh, I guess so, sure. But those yeah. actually ultimately ended up turning into horror, uh, like action franchises. And I guess there exactly, was yeah. a couple Silent Hill movies. Okay, well, you know what? I retract nope. what I'm saying. But there in are. the last few years since the resurgence of um, of video game movies, there's never been a video game horror franchise that allows video games to represent in that genre to the popularity that it certainly has the potential to. And combining mm -hmm. the popularity of Five Nights at Freddy's and the popularity of horror movies, especially in this season, this is the Halloween movie for 2023. It is. This movie had a lot of, I'll say, potential. Because I, I think it could have been a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, you're right. It's fun in fits and spurts. Um, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's really held back by an uneven script mm -hmm. I, I was gonna say uneven acting but i think mostly bad acting uh mostly on the bad and, side and scenes that just feel like they don't add to the tone of this movie that frankly you're paying to go see and it's also right. longer than it needs to be it's like almost two hours it's like an hour 50 or something like that's like come on is it actually i'm, I'm pretty on. sure I'm, 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 check. I'm pretty sure uh, it is uh 110 minutes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's an hour yeah. 50. Yeah. Uh, and, and all of those things just lead me to be like, come on, man. Like, just understand the assignment a little bit better, writing uh -huh. team yeah. and creative team. <laughs> Tucker, where do you want to start? You want to start off with the good or the bad? Um, I think I would start off with Josh Hutcherson, Tanner. Okay. Okay. So, so bad. Starting off with yeah, the, bad. Off the bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Tucker, you, you, I think you said offhandedly last night that you, you don't, you don't like Josh Hutcherson and like, I don't have strong feelings. Not in general. Nothing him. against the guy. Yeah. I'm talking oh, okay. about in okay. this okay. movie, Tanner. Sure, of course, of course. Um, yeah, and then same. I, I share that yeah. sentiment because he's not good, no. and he's given some pretty weak material to work yeah. with. Um, being like, you know, like the this strung out loser who feels responsible for his brother being kidnapped mm -hmm. when they were kids. Um, and then his whole crux, uh, his whole character crux is like taking sleeping pills. Uh, and trying to like go back into that night, that memory in his dreams, and find out who took his brother. What um, a dumb and then he also has... idea for a B plot yeah. line that ends up ultimately becoming the A plot line. Even though in your mind, mm -hmm. him working at the P 
pizza parlor and trying to survive the night should be the focus. Pizzeria Tucker. My bad. Uh, the the, yeah. Chuck, the Chuck E. Cheese analog um, <laughs> should be the focus of this movie. What this movie does is balance its script to the point where it's hard to forget or it's hard to remember sometimes that you're supposed to be watching this guy like be a security guard because yeah. they we spend so much time in his dream in the lamest dream ever made. Frankly, I mean, yeah. the fact that he has trauma about his brother, damn, sorry, bro. Sorry you went through that. But the fact that he's, <laughs> he's teleported to a sepia tone uh, forest uh-huh. that's very dry. Foggy forest. Eh, it's yeah. not even foggy. That would, that would have an atmosphere. Uh, oh, that's a good point, yeah. It's just really, really fucking boring. And, <laughs> well, and here's the thing. Here's my thing about it, Tommy. I don't think it's bad on sure. paper. I think it's bad in execution. Yeah. I think we spend too much time oh, God, yeah. at A, and it's not implemented mm-hmm. well. Um, namely, there's a line where they say, um, basically, that you know he goes back to like search for different details and stuff like that to help him jog his memory, to help him find out, see the face of the guy who did yeah. this. But we never like. There's a moment the second time we see it where it's like, like, like. Um, more like zoomed in yeah, on certain yeah. things but by and large you're looking at the same imagery yes, again absolutely. and again and like that's an easy fumble of like it's the opposite of what you yeah. what you wrote in the script actually yeah. and another thing there is payoff but no, no not really. really and i don't know no. what, what we want to do for spoilers here we'll get yeah, to we'll it in a, the a second at the end. um yeah. the spoilers don't they don't matter um but yeah. just to be safe um, but yeah, I think that the repetition is my real big issue with that because I get, yeah, on paper, sure. Okay, fine. Something about dreams, something about the spirits of these kids being in the thing and then they, they, they kidnap kids. Okay. Tying that together a little bit, but ultimately what it ends up becoming is Josh Hutcherson standing in a forest, in, in a dry ass, mm-hmm. empty ass forest, uh, like eight or nine times throughout this movie. And they're not yeah. particularly short sequences. He has some lines of dialogue and he screams and he runs around. It's like, I, I every time it went back to that, I'm like, I doubt I'm going to learn anything interesting. I doubt his character is going to be developed yeah. in any way. I, I doubt this is going to tie into the plot in a meaningful way. And it ends up just becoming the same thing over and over again that detracts from the otherwise what this movie should be going for atmosphere of a, 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 a dark and gloomy pizzeria with flashing lights and, and the stalking robots in the background and the, and the uh-huh. aesthetic of him sitting in this security room with all the security cameras. That is... What Five Nights at Freddy's, the games are, or the original ones at least, are totally sold on, and what sets it apart from other horror franchises. And mm-hmm. when we are in that, and I guess we're transitioning a little bit to the good, I certainly want to tie back to like what makes sure, other sure. characters weak and stuff, but th- the movie works. When we're, when he- well, yeah, the, the issue is, Doug, I'll tie back, back to the bad sure. for you. We don't get a lot yeah. of that. Like, how many sequences do we get of, like, Josh Hutcherson walking around the P- Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, like, exploring and getting yeah. spooked? Or, like, or sitting at the desk stuff. and looking at uh, yeah. looking at the security cameras. Of course, that's a little bit less filmically interesting, Whenever... but that's what the fucking games are, and that's what makes them distinct. Yeah. Whenever we are at the desk or in uh, Freddy's Pizzeria, it is... Probably like eighty percent of the time, he's sleeping and doing yeah, the dream yeah. thing. It really seems like a like a misfire for me in in the script. Yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, Tucker, you want to talk about some of the other characters? Yeah. Said? Well, so we have a supporting cast of characters. I'm going to go out and let me say a very weak is a cast of supporting mm-hmm. characters, and not that they're surrounded by or are surrounding a guy that is way more interesting than them. He's actually Josh Hutcherson as Mike is maybe the least interesting part of the movie uh he's sleepwalking Mm -hmm. through these scenes sometimes literally and he's just got no emotion and when he's supposed to have emotion it doesn't feel earned i think he does a very very poor job but i i don't think it's helped by the fact that on the whole the supporting cast is is really shaky uh there is his sister who as a child actress she's fine she's not she's not amazing but she's doing she's doing okay she's clearly having some fun with it um she's not my Mm -hmm. main issue but if it had been a better child actor maybe i could have bought into their relationship a little bit more like the drama with her yeah. with his sister then his aunt who is really 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 bad and she feels superfluous really to the bad. plot um, yeah. and then vanessa who is probably my favorite yes. part of the movie because she actually has mm-hmm. ties into the story in an interesting way and the actress that's portraying her is 
actually giving some personality. Um, but it's just such a mixed bag in terms of the characters. And it certainly does not help that the main character might be the worst part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Josh Hutcherson is mumbling through a lot of these lines. And yeah, I, I, I honestly thought, yeah, who is it? Um, sorry to Mary Stuart Masterson as Aunt Jane, but She's maybe really the worst bad. part of the whole She's film. Really bad. Um, and yeah, like Vanessa was fine yeah. and Abby was fine. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, I think it all ties back to the fact that like, I don't think this movie leans into its own campiness no. enough or with enough confidence. No. There are moments, yeah. and let's talk about it. Tom. Let's yeah. get to it. There are moments when it mm-hmm. does, and that's when it works. Yeah. When, I guess, mild spoilers, I guess. But there is a moment where, you know, Josh Hutcherson brings his sister Abby to, like, um, do the night shift with him because the babysitter, well, the babysitter's dead uh, for various mm-hmm. reasons in the plot. Um, and she, like, mild spoilers, befriends the animatronics. Sure. Um, all, all your favorite Five Nights at Freddy's characters, she's, like, friends with them, and they're all, like, gathering around her and, like, tickling her or whatever, and then they make, like, a big fort, yeah. and it's, like, set to, like, uh, like an, like an 80s, uh, song that's also in the movie Blackberry from this year, um, and I'm, like, this is a very interesting and unique tone yeah. to take. Yeah. Uh, and it works. It's fucking stupid, yeah. but it works. Yeah, and it's the, it's the scenes with the actual animatronics that are the absolute highlight of this film. And the unfortunate part mm-hmm. is that they, even though I think are a solid chunk of the movie, they end up feeling relatively backgrounded because the script is so concerned mm-hmm. with Josh Hutcherson in his dream state and figuring out what's going on with that. Um, but that is the best part of the movie and some of the best horror sequences uh, of this year because it is campy. And these and these characters are kind of goofy and they are kind of fun. And the, in the scenes where someone's getting chased down a hallway by an animatronic cupcake that's biting onto the rag, it's like, that's... Yeah. It's stupid. It's and silly. It's shot funny. But it's, it's, just, it's just dumb horror fun, which is what yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's is loved for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but and I do want to stay on the positives with this, because, uh-huh. again, I, I think you were right in mentioning that the screen time balance of this movie with the stuff in the pizzeria and the animatronics is not as as uh, foreground as it should be. But when we're there, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, this really works. I think the production design of Freddy Spazer's Pizzeria with all these uh, like neon signs that they had to make for this and the like peeling wallpaper and kids' doodles and ball pits and the arcade machines, like that is such a unique idea for a horror movie setting. It's fantastic, mm-hmm. and it's done very well. I think the, I think the production is, is amazing. And then we get uh, Jim Hansen's company making these animatronics that are uh, phenomenal. They're amazing. They're like one to one. They look they look yeah. great. And I, mean, people, I think people have been saying this since the, like the trailer comes out. But like they look yeah. perfect. Like they're they're exactly what the they exactly what the character models of the game mm-hmm. look like. Um, you know, they feel real and they're they're all practical yeah. because they are practical effects. Oh my god. <laughs> um. And even like, I don't, I don't know. I think they built like real animatronics for this um, because I saw a headline about like they're trying to buzz up some stuff for the movie. They're like, oh, uh, the the, uh, the one of the animatronics moved on its own while we were mm-hmm. working on it or whatever. It was like, oh. Um, but also, there's obviously some bits where it's people yeah, in suits, yeah. but it's um, seamless, and it look, it still looks yeah, good. It, looks it still amazing. looks really, really great. Um, in either case, Tucker, talking about the good, we talk, we're we're do- we're dogging on a lot of the yeah. cast here. There's one. One that man is, understood the assignment. One, one man in particular who knew exactly what he's doing. He understood the assignment, as you said, and as the kids are saying nowadays. That man's name is one that's dear, near and dear to my heart. One of my favorite boys in the whole wide world. Matthew oh, Willard yeah. is in this oh, yeah. film. As Steve Raglan, or also, you know, spoiler, but I think I think if I say spoiler, people know who he actually is, but I'll, I'll say it anyway. He's great. Yeah. He's fucking fantastic. He is nailing each and every line delivery when a lot of other people are like fumbling some of their, you know, maybe their uh, more heartfelt mm-hmm. lines or their sillier lines or whatever when they can't really find that tenor. Yeah. Matthew Lillard is yeah. nailing it 100% yeah. of the time. He's batting 3,000. He's batting 3,000, um, but he's only batting 3,000 for like seven minutes of screen time, maybe. <laughs> he's, not, he's not in the movie a whole lot, but when he is, it is a beautiful reprieve yeah. um, where he is stealing whatever scene he's yeah. in. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And that is, I think, another reason why I am going to dog on Josh Hutchinson for being poor in this movie because 
when you cast someone like Matthew Lillard to play against him, and of course, he has the opportunity to be a little more crazy and be a little more flamboyant, but yeah. it really helps to shine a light on the fact that that Josh Hutcherson and Mike as a character is just much less interesting, and he has much less personality, <laughs> and the character is written to be sleepy, but maybe just don't write the character that way to have him be a little more engaging. I don't I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. Um, uh, but yeah, love Matthew Lillard, highlight of the movie. Easy good performance in this movie and when, when i can yes. point to abby or vanessa and be like they they were okay like they were good but they weren't mm-hmm. matthew lillard understood it and he brought an energy to the film that everyone yeah. everyone else lacked okay look, he he brings the energy so let's do spoilers sure. now let's talk about spoilers sure. oh, let's talk about the ending essentially the the ending reveals so reveal a that which you saw coming from the very word go um, Josh Hutcherson's brother, Mike's brother, excuse me, Garrett, mm-hmm. uh, was kidnapped by William Afton, who, surprise, surprise, is Matthew yeah. Willard. Um, and there's that's about it. That's like all the yeah. basically all the reveal yes. is. There's not any like deeper like why he did it or which animatronic yeah. Garrett is yeah. in or anything like that, which is another massive scripting yes. issue <laughs> when you are hinging the whole crux of your main character on finding out who did it and you fight you figure it out and you're like but that's all he needs to know really yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all he really needs to know i guess even though the the massive like lore about five nights at freddy's that's doled out over this over the course of this film is like he killed the children and he put their bodies yeah. in the animatronics and now they're haunted and he controls them with like he ma- he manipulates these children's spirits and has them like murder people in in the pizzeria and then for the main character like yeah, but we don't need to get into yeah. like that I, of, of how those things cross where the cross. I, I think this movie doesn't do its own stupid lore justice, and and yeah. as someone who finds that kind of stuff interesting, even if it is yeah. super not natural nonsense, I can buy that the bodies of kids are put into these animatronics and now they're possessed. Sure, I'll go with that. I'll, I'll go with the kidnapping angle. I think that gives it like a sort of dark edge uh, of reality of like, Oh man, there's mm-hmm. a real fucked up guy behind all this. Um, but yeah. when it tries to tie into Josh Hodgson character, as you said, e- every place where there is an easy connection, they just cut it and they're like, eh, eh, who cares? And then even within the, lo- the lore of these characters, there is <laughs> some stuff that just doesn't really make sense to me of why are we seeing the, ki- uh, the, actual kids sometimes and and they're like sometimes out, like, talking to the characters and okay it makes sense that they're in the dream but then why are they in the dream how does that tie together and then uh the character golden freddy shows up for a little bit but has no mm-hmm. ties to the rest of the plot and never shows up again and what is, what is the cupcake another dead child i don't understand <laughs> that and like maybe the cupcake was garrett <laughs> Maybe, um, but there's just yeah. like so many of these elements that they they sometimes sit you down and they're like explaining the lore, but then when you really mm-hmm. try to connect it to what's actually happening on screen, it's like well, why? And then the mm-hmm. twist to end up uh, having William Afton be defeated is that they learn that the so the drawings have power and the drawings on the wall yep, drawings have power drawings on Massive the wall power with children. control are, are what are is allowing. William Afton to control the kids. So Abby pins a uh, kill William Afton drawing on the wall. And then yeah. it's like, no, no, no. She, she, what she does is she draws a photo of what really happened. Because yeah. the photo on the wall is, you know, William Afton in the, in the spring trap. Yeah. Yeah. I think spring trap. Yeah. The spring trap suit. Um, like holding hands with all mm-hmm. the kids. And then she's like, nah, that's not real. And so she, she pins up the photo of William Afton in the, in the spring job, killing, all the, killing kids, yeah. the children. And then they're all like, and then all the animatronics are like, what the fuck? That's what really happened. And then, yeah, they all, they all, uh, kill yeah. William Afton. They, they all kill him. him. They lock him into yeah. the suit. Yeah. Um, Matt, just want to say Matthew Lillard, when he's like, when he, he's like, <laughs> he's in a fucking giant, like worn out bunny yeah. suit with a bow tie on it. And is is just his head poking out of it, and he's screaming. He's screaming at these like giant animatronics. He's screaming at Josh Hutcherson. He's screaming at spoilers again. We're in it. Um, Vanessa is his daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he's yelling, and like he looks so silly, but he's also selling it so well. Another moment of like Matthew Lillard is perfect for this yeah. movie, and apparently he signed on for like a three picture sure. deal yeah. with these. So couldn't be happier yeah, about that. Frankly, absolutely. Um, Dan, anything else you want to point out about Five Nights at Freddy's? 
Matt Pat. Oh Jesus, that's right. Yeah, that did happen. It um, needed to happen. Matt Pat Whatever. It's it's it, it's it's pretty yeah. quick. It's uh, pretty over and done with. Um, I'm fine with it. I I it's kind of cringy. He says the thing. It's cringy, but like, I I think I would be, I think I would be more upset if they didn't do it because <laughs> like lean yeah. into the bit. That is leaning into the bit. <laughs> exactly. This is what I'm talking about. The movie Tucker. I'm okay with it because it's fucking stupid and silly, and that's what Five Nights at Freddy's is as like a a cultural thing. Yeah. It's stupid. It at moments takes its lore quite seriously, and it, it's like a it's um what am I looking for here? It's a creepy pasta sure. thing. Well, like from a bird's eye view, it's silly and mm-hmm. stupid. But if you like get into it a little bit and you look at certain details from a certain yeah. angle, you're like, yeah, it's it, it's interesting that we they put like a like a dark element, a really fucked up element to this story. But from 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 a wide lens, it's silly and yeah. stupid. And the Matt Pat cameo is right in Absolutely. line with that. He says. It's just a theory. He's a fucking waiter at a yeah. diner talking about lunch or whatever. I love it. I don't know. I thought I was glad. I was walking out to get my my Five Nights at Freddy's yeah. pizza right when he was popping up. I saw. I, I was turning out. And you're like uh, to go to walk down the stairs, and then I saw the, like the sign that said like something cafe. I'm like, oh, and you knew on. that he was gonna be. Okay. Yeah, because I had seen um, a tweet of like him like leaning down at sure, like a diner. Okay. I like, I hadn't seen that. Um, I didn't know he was in it, so it was yeah. a. It came as quite a shock to me. Yeah. I saw the cafe. I'm like, no, no, no. That's it. Like, he's coming. Yeah. Oh, lot he coming. Um, Tucker, Five Nights at Freddy's, four and a half out of ten. Yeah. I, I think I will, you know, you know, I'll just go the exact same four and a half. I, it is okay. below average. It, it is a bad movie. I, it's the, a bad the movie. The scripting, the acting are bad, but there's so much potential here. The Jim Hansen Company yeah. made amazing animatronics. The production design team did amazing. And and when it is leaning into the uh, Bonnie Chica Freddy uh, uh, Foxy <laughs> walking around and doing stuff and performing on stage and then and then killing uh-huh. people and then we have people screaming and hiding and there's actually some gore in this movie, uh, which is quite a yeah. shock. And like some of the gore is like, okay, oh, Jesus, so they actually did that in a PG-13 horror movie? Um, it, it works. Uh, and I hope that they mm-hmm. just learned that when they... Mi- do make a sequel to this because it's going to make a fuckload of money that yep. it can just be a horror movie. I, I think that yep. what this movie tried to do is appeal to families and kids by having a message maybe and, and having a main character that's a little more redeemable with a motivation. And Here's what I said. Yeah, here's what I said. You don't need to do the whole brother backstory. You can strip it down to bare bones, yeah. simple plotting. Josh Hutcherson is a loser who must be redeemed. Yes. Like you need a character arc for somebody because yeah. it's a movie that he, that he needs to and, hold a job, take care of his sister, and then and be, yeah. he take by taking care of his sister, his sister is getting kidnapped by the things, saving his sister's life. It's it's simple, yeah. it's clean. It doesn't add this detracting element where we got to go to a fucking forest in Nebraska every once yeah. in a while. It's like, you, what you the cut, fuck? <laughs> shout, shout out, out to um, you cut up like twenty yeah. minutes of the yeah. movie doing that, and it's an it's an it's a tight yeah. ninety. It's perfect. Even you make more uh, money, more show times. Uh huh. Everything points to me being like, look, they can fix this for a next entry. It can, de- mm-hmm. it can quote unquote, devolve into more just straight schlocky horror and it'll be all the better for it. But there is quality there. It's unfortunately hidden behind this. It's buried. It, it's buried yeah. behind a, a crappy script and crappy acting. It's like, are you kidding it's a, me? It's jammed into the an animatronic suit. Yeah, that is Mike Smith. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mike four Smith. and a half out of ten. That's a little, quick thing, quick thing. Okay, so at the very beginning of the movie, Matthew Lillard is looking at his file, and he and he's like, "Mr. Uh, we, it looks like we can't find a job for you, Mr. Mike Sm," and he doesn't say his no. last name because clearly we're meant to recognize that he realizes that Mike is the brother of the child that he kidnapped all those yeah. years ago, uh, but we don't learn his last name until the very end when he says it, and it's Smith. Are you telling me? You t- t- are you telling me? me? <laughs> you tell me that Matthew Lillard saw a guy named Mike Smith, and he's like, "Gotta be the brother of the guy that I kidnapped," yeah. hmm. with a last name like Smith. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's just an odd moment. It's an odd moment because it's me- yeah. it's meant to have like emotional weight. Weight. Yeah, doesn't yeah. work. Um, doesn't a lot work. of this movie doesn't work. Um, but there is some elements of it that do work that keeps it from being an irredeemably trashy horror movie. Uh, there's quality yeah. in places. Um, and I just hope that this creative team gets their shit together for a sequel because there's a lot of potential or 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 or